Three shots ran out of 12.30 p.m. on November 22nd, 1963. A U.S. president died in the arms of his wife. However, his death was the only first of three in less than two days. This is the story of the man behind the murder of one of the most beloved presidents in American history. Now wait a minute, did Oswald actually kill JFK? I mean, history books tell us that, but can we actually trust it? Maybe the answer is in page 47 of the president's book. It's the Kennedy assassination. Oh, shh. We don't have time. Yeah. I'm still waiting for Nicolas Cage to tell me. Seriously though, the conspiracy theories go on for days. The grassy knoll that overlooks where the assassination took place, the mob, the fucking CIA, an umbrella man? Damn, we're about to go down this rabbit hole here. Let's pull it back a little. I want you to take a look at this guy and this other guy. And the best place to start is by learning a little bit more about the villain who our textbooks have told us over the last 50 years is the soul killer. So what did our history books actually tell us about the JFK assassination? Kennedy was riding in a motorcade through the streets of Dallas on that November afternoon in 1963 as part of the fundraising trip. Crowds lined on both sides of the street while Kennedy and his wife Jackie sat waving, accompanied by Texas Governor Connolly and his wife. Lurking just inside the southeast window on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository, Lee Harvey Oswald fired three bullets. He was seen by witnesses just before the first shot rang out, and again before that last shot that killed the president. Three shell casings were later found under that same window. Oswald had fired across Dealey Plaza as the president's open-top Lincoln limo passed in front of the depository. Two of those bullets hit Kennedy. The first one that hit him traveled through the upper back of the base of his neck, exiting through his throat. Then after traveling through Kennedy, it managed to hit and seriously wound Connolly. The second bullet hit Kennedy in the back of his head, killing him instantly. The third bullet missed, and the fragments of that bullet are believed to have just caused minor facial injury to a bystander named James Tegg. But why would anyone want to kill a president? So what were Oswald's actual motives? In order to answer that question, we have to take a look at Oswald's twisted up life up until that point. That should be able to give us a few answers. Oswald was born in 1939 in New Orleans. He didn't have anything close to resembling a normal family life. Oswald's dad died shortly after he was born, and he was raised by his mother, who moved them around from place to place. It's said that she severely neglected him and Oswald lacked affection growing up. No shit, right? Anyways, growing up, he spent time in juvenile detention for truancy at a young age of seven. He attended 12 different schools in 22 different locations. A psychiatrist determined that he was, quote, emotionally disturbed and with a vivid fantasy life. A social worker also described him as a child who lacked affection and had built a wall around him to protect himself. Same here, man. <laughs> but anyway, there's a lot of people who lacked attention growing up. So does this mean that these are the perfect ingredients for a presidential murder? We have to take a closer look. By 17, he had joined the Marines where he trained in shooting. He became a marksman, testing just short of a sharpshooter and also learned to speak Russian. While enlisted, his behavior issues continued and he was court-martialed twice, once for accidentally shooting himself in the elbow with an unauthorized firearm and the other for getting into a fight with a sergeant. He eventually got discharged and joined the reserves. In 1959, when he traveled to Russia, he tried to defect from the US, telling the Soviet authorities that he was a communist. He was denied, but allowed to stay there, working at an electronics factory in Minsk. Oswald soon got bored of life in Russia and was allowed back into the United States in 1962, along with his new wife and infant daughter. Because he had tried to defect, the FBI had added Oswald to their watch list. He and his family had settled in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the future location of Kennedy's assassination. Now that we have a little bit of context, let's go back to that day in Dallas where JFK actually died. What actually happened when he shot those three bullets? Well, afterwards, he managed to escape the depository, hiding the rifle he used in the sixth floor. He got by authorities after being dismissed as simply an employee of the building he was in. It wasn't until later that police realized that he was most likely the killer. That encounter with the police, along with eyewitness testimonies, helped them put together a good description of Oswald. By that point, Oswald had already made it back to his apartment. 
He headed out wearing a jacket that concealed a revolver. Less than an hour after killing Kennedy, he would fatally shoot and kill Dallas patrolman J.D. Tippett. Tippett had confronted him three miles away from the depository in a residential neighborhood. Oswald immediately shot Tippett four times. Witnesses heard the shots and saw him escaping the scene with a revolver. A few witnesses saw him trying to sneak into the back of a Texas theater and was finally arrested. Okay, so it's safe to say this guy has a few issues here and there, right? You know, a little bit of a loose screw in his head. But a few missing screws doesn't mean you go ahead and try to kill an American president. So up to this point, we don't really know why he actually killed Kennedy. It's often reported that the reason why he killed Kennedy is not because of Kennedy himself, but because everything Kennedy stood for. You see, Oswald was a pretty outspoken communist and he hated capitalism. And as we said before, he tried to deflect from the US to Russia. So it's safe to say he wasn't a big fan of America either. And who was one of the only people in the world that represents peak capitalism in America? An American president. While being interrogated, he denied his guilt saying, I'm just a patsy. He believed his arrest was just because of his association with the Soviet Union. He also denied that he was a communist, stating instead that he was a Marxist. Authorities then charged Oswald for the killing of Tippett based on the eyewitness testimony. He was the only suspect for Kennedy's murder, but they couldn't charge him yet with the assassination without investigating further. So let's take a closer look at the months leading up to the assassination. How did Oswald end up at the book depository? First, Oswald bought the 6.5 millimeter Italian carbine rifle he used in the assassination back in March. He purchased it secondhand via mail order for around 20 bucks. He used the alias A. Hiddle. Then later, he purchased a 38 Smith & Wesson Model 10 revolver, the same way using the same alias. It's believed that the rifle was also used in an assassination attempt back in April, months before Oswald used it to kill JFK. Oswald, however, failed to assassinate General Edwin Walker in his Dallas home. It's believed that he tried to kill Walker because he was an outspoken anti-communist. In June, he tried to set up an exit strategy, applying for a passport stating that he planned to travel later that year. It didn't really work out the way he wanted, since it was only valid for countries not considered communists at the time. In September, he attempted to exit the country using a 15-day tourist car to Mexico. He tried to find an alternative way to get into Cuba, but back then travel was banned. He was unsuccessful and returned to the United States. In September, the Dallas Morning News reported that Kennedy would be visiting Texas that November. So on October 16th, Oswald secured a job at the Texas Book Depository. At the time, the route Kennedy would take was not finalized. It was only on November 18th that the final motorcade route was decided upon and announced to the public. Was it a coincidence that Oswald chose to work there? It wasn't until after he got the job that the motorcade route was announced to the public. The news of Kennedy's assassination hit everyone pretty hard. The effects rippled across the country. One of those who felt the impact was a man named Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby was a local nightclub owner, as well as a police informant, with suspected ties to organized crime. It was said that Ruby was, quote, distraught when Kennedy was killed. He was seen crying in closest clubs after the shooting. Ruby was in fact a familiar face at the police station since a lot of those officers used to go to his clubs. Yeah, nothing shady there, but anyways. On Sunday, November 24th, he had no problem entering the Dallas City Hall where Oswald was being held. The transferring of the infamous prisoner from Dallas City Hall to the county jail was an event. It was being covered by local and national media outlets. As Oswald was escorted into the basement of City Hall, Jack Ruby walked up to him and pumped two bullets into his abdomen with a handgun at point blank range fatally wounding Oswald. Photographs capturing the moments before, during and after the shooting, etching the face of Oswald, first unaware, then writing in pain, were imprinted in everyone's minds forever. This gruesome murder took place on live television. It was the first ever homicide caught on live TV. There is no question about it, Oswald has been shot at point blank range, fired into his stomach. Oswald died soon after in the same hospital where his first victim died only two days earlier. Was the shooting of Oswald premeditated? Was it planned? Did Jack Ruby act alone? As soon as Ruby killed Oswald, he said, I plan on shooting him three times. A Dallas police dispatcher also received a call that morning at 3 a.m. threatening the life of Oswald. He swore that he recognized the voice on the other end of the line 
as Ruby. Many suspect that he was part of a conspiracy to kill Kennedy and that he was actually being used as a puppet to silence Oswald. Ruby was later convicted of shooting Oswald. He told the authorities that he wanted to ensure that Mrs. Kennedy never had to testify against Oswald in court, sparing her the emotional trauma. Sentenced to death, Ruby avoided the electric chair on appeal. Ruby never did face a second trial. He died of pulmonary embolism in jail. The year after Kennedy's death in 1964, the Warren Commission was established by the current president, Lyndon B. Johnson. The goal was to officially investigate the facts of both JFK and Oswald's murders, declare the findings, and put any speculation to rest. The total investigation took 10 months. So who's really behind the murder of one of America's most beloved presidents? Well, if you believe the findings of the Warren Commission, it's simple. It was Lee Harvey Oswald. And why wouldn't you? I mean, it's not like the government has ever lied to us, right? But anyways, I make videos like this every single week. So if you did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. See you soon. Love you like a headache.